What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for this special topical but still about history episode, Rob Fox. I'm joined as always by Dan Register and Jake Goldman. Unfortunate timing with the set. Uh, yes, if you're watching this on video, this is because of Halloween. Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. And we just, we can't undo all of this. We can't control what happens in the Middle East. Of October. No, we really can't. Yeah, and um, also, like, just, there's just a lot of moving parts on the set to take it all down. Would so, be. Yeah. a lot of skeletons. You did add in stuff, our though. Closet. You, did, yeah, well, you did add stuff. But I'm trying to be festive. Dan also worked really hard, and we weren't going to sit here and be like, hey. We're not going to tear it down. Don't let the terrorists win. Yeah, exactly. Like, we can't be like, hey, you know, some bad shit happened. That's out of your control. Am I supposed to glass the set? Oh, fuck. No. No. Don't. Damn don't. it. No. No. You oh. can add in the, the rim shot. Brutes. If you like. It's up to you. Um, Mr. Editor. But yeah, today we're here to talk about, obviously, some stuff's going on in, in Ill, uh, Israel and Palestine. We've sort of done topical episodes before, like when Russia invaded Ukraine. We or were like, here's when a snowstorm hit Austin. That like, was same magnitude. about uh, us being... Heroes, though we are heroes, still to this day. For True, we did it remotely, it. and I did it from the the uh, studio because you lived there. I did live in the studio for seven days. It was rough. Did you shower? No. Was for there seven, shower in there? No. Of okay. course not. Well, then he didn't shower. Yeah, how much was the shower? I mean, there there you go. Sink, I guess. Did you give take like a hobo bath? Yeah, a couple. Okay, that's love a good hobo bath. That's fine. I, at the end of it, I remember like I we our water went out for the last two days, and I was just like, I'm not. Not showering for two or three days. So I just like got in the bathtub, dumped bottles of water on myself. Still jerked off before I did it. Of course. Showered, Jack. Yeah. But that's just business. Hobo so. bath is great because you still feel dirty, but you're just wet now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just smell like a dog. You're wet garbage. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> Afterward, you're like, I don't know why I thought this would make me feel good. But we're going to talk about um, the I Israel-Palestine stuff today. Not We're going to give you our hot. Takes. Yeah, the spiciest fucking takes you've ever heard. We're not going to talk about modern history or what led up to this current event. We're, we're going to talk about the last 50 years. No, we're, the last 50 years is not happening. We're going up to World War I, um, up to the beginning of World War I. So we're here to tell you the real truth. The, we're here to go deep into history. And why I want to do this is, <laughs> is that it's always funny to me. It just, like, tickles me when people are like, that's their land. No, that's their land. It, it belongs to them. It belongs to them. And I think people have this, it's, col co it's colonialization, like they're colonizing. Whatever. Right, miss me with that. I think people have this idea of what's happening in Israel, like, especially Americans of like, it's basically like the Native Americans to them, you know what I mean? Someone moved in and took those other people's land that's been there forever, and they always owned it until we came in at the last minute and stole it all. Check it out. No one's owned this land for a long time. No one who's lived there. No yeah. one who's from there. No. They've been they other people have been on the mortgage the entire fucking time. It it's, has been perhaps the most conquered land of all time. Like literally, I don't know if there is a part of Earth that has been more colonized and recolonized and conquered and reconquered than fucking Syria and the Levant, Palestine, Judea, Judea, yeah, whatever you want to call it, Syria, Palestina. I mean, it's literally like, just yeah. it's literally just the fucking crossroads of the old world. It's where every belief system and war path crossed and intersected. It's where three continents meet. Yeah, it's it's bound to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Also, can we immediately just squash like demonizing colonization? Oh, Do, no. Uh, elaborate? I guess somebody I don't know. I'm not saying you're wrong. Somebody used force and power to take land. Yeah, that's human history. That's how man. it's always been. That's, oh. It's it's relatively new that that's Yeah, the comforts of yeah. not having that in the modern Western society, that's pretty new. Yeah, if anyone thinks the Sioux are from North Dakota, I have bad news. Um, also, I just wanted to kind of put this out there um, as the only more than 2% Jewish person on the show. Are you, are you doing okay? Yeah. I wanted to oh, to oh, now it happens. I want to check on you. Yeah, oh, you now it happens. Okay. Well, How many people who posted check on your Jewish friends checked on you? About a zero. <laughs> I saw a lot of stories this week. That was the check-in, in fact. Yeah, the check-in well, You were was supposed to respond to their uh, I, DM, yeah. I, I guess I didn't give out enough hearts <laughs> on the on the, on the the hey, DMs. Don't forget about me. Yeah. Old like, Jakey boy. Yeah, no, I just, I thought it was interesting how many people post, like, talk to your Jewish friends and, like, reach out to them. And maybe it's the way I present, but uh, I didn't get no phone calls. 
I didn't get one. I didn't get one text. I didn't get a phone so call. Funny. Didn't get a DM. No one was like, Jake. You've done birthright, right? No. Oh, I thought you did. No. I, I thought you actually did. Well, you know, no, he, we have that uh, running bit of him being in the IPF. Well, I know that, but yeah. you did. You, Which, have, been, uh, you Jake, have been there, though. What's your excuse for not going over right now? I told you, I made leavened bread at base camp one time, and they kicked me out. Mm. Ooh. I was on my sourdough kick. And they yeah. Like, hey. They were like, where do you think you are, buddy? <laughs> hey, guy, this ain't America. Um, no, but I, uh, the reason I didn't go on birthright, because I was like, oh, a free trip to where? The most hotly contested place on earth. I'm it's, good. No thanks. I'm fine. I'm telling you, man. The, that, it's like I have a wife already. <laughs> yeah, that is, I'm, I'm good. That is the thing about all the, um, what do you call it, uh, foreigners that got kidnapped and stuff there. Where I'm like, look, it's ter- it's fucking horrible, like killed and kidnapped and stuff like that. But I'm like, I mean, they weren't going to Toronto. Like it's you take your life into your own hands. I feel like there's to- there's always a risk with that, always with in that Israel. Space. Yes, fucking always. Space, there's always a risk. And personally, like, I don't know. You know, I have a connection to that belief system and that area, obviously. But at the same time, like, we're a roaming bunch of people ourselves. Not on, not yeah, on so purpose. So if you're yeah. new to this podcast, send the, the death threats that way. Yeah, if you got a Fatswana issue, I guess, holler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I just, I don't, people will ask me, like, what my take is on it. And my answer is always like, that is such a complex question you just asked. Right. That I couldn't possibly speak to that. It's like telling that. It, it's like, a, it's it, like, hey, you're Jewish. What's your take? It's like on yeah. a comedian being like, hey, you're a comedian. Tell me a joke. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just like, I do make one, me laugh. I've never been there. I don't. I think you right. had. You not? It's no. almost like if somebody asked me and Rob about Northern Ireland. Yeah. Like, hey, what's your take on the, like, I mean, I guess you'd probably have more of a take on the Vatican, but like, we don't really have a. Uh, infallible, yeah, right. That's my <laughs> of course. Infallible, one word. Actually, yes. that's our take. Give, Crystal Palace, give yes. back Gaza to the Pope. We rightfully took that land <laughs> in the 1090s. It's been stolen from us ever since. Thought about wearing my crusade outfit, didn't. I talked you out of that. Decided not to. Yeah, that that probably was a bad look. In bad taste. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude, it, it just always cracks me up when people say that. Because I'm like, man, if you know anything about this area, you know that it has been nothing but conquered. In fact, doing my research on this, what we're going to do today is just run down everyone who's fucking owned Palestine slash Israel since essentially the last time they were in. We don't even have time for jokes. No, no. <laughs> I, will, I will say there's one meme that's been it's going around. It's a CVS around. receipt. There's one meme that's been going around that kills me, and it's like, Land that you kill for isn't yours. Land that you're willing to die for is. And it's like, but that's literally just how conquering works. Like, at a certain point, you killed to get there. Right. If and you're if you're killing kill for it, and if you kill for what, it, you're, you're sneaking up on them? Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's playground rules, man. Like, it's crazy. But I think, too, it's like, oh, land you're willing to die for is yours. It's like, well, if you're willing to kill for it, I'm guessing there's a component of you're willing to die because you're trying to kill. Like... That's that's it's not like oh I'm gonna kill without fear of death, no one's going into conquest like that. No, yeah, it's not like, a video game, brother. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's not that way. So I, anyway, I won't dive. I'm yeah, done with takes. Fine. I'm done with takes. So one of the fir- one of the funniest things, by the way, like the irony just never ends. Um, with this is that the Levant, Palestine, that whole area, whatever you want to call it, you could argue, depending on what you want to call humanity's homeland, that it was the first foreign land that human beings colonized at all yeah because it was the first part outside of africa that human beings set up any sort of settlement even stopped to get a bite you yeah. know what i mean have a drink yeah, yeah. like literally like it, it it very early man like uh, talking like a million years ago fossils found there leaving the continent that stuff so even then that's funny to me but um it wasn't long until so the the Canaanites predate the Israelites. Canaanites are sort of proto Israelites, proto Palestinians, whatever you want. Canaanites, both Palestinians and Israelites are genetically off of Canaanites, essentially. They're they're basically the same thing, it's just different beliefs. Um Yeah, so the Canaanites came in, settled, blah, 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 in both prehistory and then, you know, started to get written history a little bit. Um Obviously, those were the people that Egypt started uh, exerting force over. Egypt was already, we're talking like in the time of like Egypt and Sumer and stuff like that. So 3000 BC, uh, 2000 BC, stuff like that. Uh, Canaanites both 
getting force exerted on them by Egypt, but also for a little bit, for a, a little bit of time, they controlled Lower Egypt, the Nile Delta. They did. They conquered it for a little bit. I'm about to find out all that history when I play Pharaoh Total War this weekend. Right. Just oh, came out. So we're, you expect a lot of episodes on that region in that time period. <laughs> it's just from your video game. Do you know when it takes place? When? The Sea Peoples. I was going to oh. bring up the Sea Peoples, yeah. Yeah, it takes place during the Sea Peoples, which we have done an episode on. Ramses the Third fighting the, what was it, the king who beat off seamen? Yes. Yeah, uh, really easy strategy, but effective. Uh, Lure them into the straits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the high ground and just start firing bows. You know what's easier than water? Not water. <laughs> arrow you have, just send it right at them. Um, so anyway, that that kind of went back and forth. Um and, you know, that was the Bronze Age, Bronze Age or whatever. And then, in the Bronze Age, a group of people showed up in Gaza, in the Bronze Age. A group of people we've talked about, like I said, in the Ramses III episode. The Sea Peoples that he defeated were sent there and or settled there after their invasion of Egypt was beaten. So it almost starts as a place of banishment. These are the Philistines. The Philistines are the Sea People. Yeah, they have really? they have figured out that the Philistines were were Greek. We just have no idea uh, where the Sea People came from. They're pretty sure it's Crete. Yeah, very it, similar pottery to Crete, stuff like that, but not confirmed. You can, I, mean, I don't think you could pretty positive confirm it, but it's a matter of like, yeah, it's God. It's been a while since I've read about them, but. For a long time, they mystified historians because just like there's all these references of sea people. They came out of fucking nowhere, <laughs> and that's like when you read the history of it, it's like they just appeared and they started raining hell. Like that's what they did. I it think just it makes me think of like uh, old monster movies, like Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's sea what I think people. of the sea people. Sea yeah, people, like yeah. Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea type shit. They're yeah, just sea people, the people of the sea. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, honestly, that's it's a fearful thought for I, the context of the time. I don't know anything. I don't know what their like military tactics were. It seems just like they basically bushwhacked everyone. I think it's roll up but on I, the ocean. Well, so I think I think what they, probably their advantage was was just speed. Right. Like they just fast. I mean, that was they had drugs. Yeah, bathtub. You never know, man. I mean, they could have. They uh, could have been on some kind of upper. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, people forget. It's not like there were roads and forms of quick travel on land. Boat was the fastest yeah. way to traverse the world. By far, yeah. Yeah. So, like, they could roll up and the, really quick. The Near East had a pretty good, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. For boat. Especially in the Mediterranean yeah, and yeah. canals and stuff. Yeah, totally. It's It's the... Most supreme way to travel back. So the Sea Peoples get beaten by the Egyptians. They settle Ga what is basically Gaza, bigger than Gaza, but Gaza's in it, and it kind of and it, it encompasses Gaza. Uh, they're Greek. They're living next to the Jews. Essentially, they become the Philistines. The Philistines are like Goliath, the people David fought. Uh, all kinds of stuff like that. A very common enemy in the Old Testament. Yes, the Philistines, the Philistines are often mentioned. Um, the Philistines, by the way, are not the Palestinians. Common misconception. The Philistines are gone. They just sort of uh, bred their way into other people. They kind of just got dissipated into the breeding population. It's interesting because I'm very Greek as well. That's probably from later. That's definitely from later. <laughs> yeah. If I had to I'm not guess. a Philistine. No. Yeah. yeah. Turns out. Um, Palestinians, not like I said, not the same as Philistines. So although it's worth noting uh, that while the Jewish kingdoms of Judah and Israel, people forget there were two. And Jerusalem was in Judah. Not Israel. Israel was the northern kingdom. Judah was the southern kingdom. Uh, they mostly they comprised what is mostly modern day Israel, but the Philistines again controlled Gaza. That ancient Israel did not have. It depends on what form of ancient Israel you're talking about. If you're talking about the kingdom of Judea, that had Gaza in it. If you're talking about the which one is that? Is that with Solomon? Judea would be King Herod that era. Okay. Boo. A little before King oh, Herod, no, but so, that sorry. that dynasty. I'm thinking of King Haman. Yeah, yeah. King yeah. Herod's the one that wanted to kill Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I mix them up. Uh, so, the Jews and Philistines fought each other for a while. Uh, when they weren't getting intermittently conquered or vassalized by Egypt, uh, it was fun, I'm sure. That's, like I said, where David and Goliath was. But all that fun ended. And I'm really not sure anyone from Israel or Palestine, minus one little blip, 
ruled that area again until after World War II. Yep. We are talking the fucking Bronze Age. No one who is native to there ruled this area again with one, with the exception of one little blip until fucking World War II was over. Rob, they called dibs. <laughs> yeah. You can't really beat dibs. Dibs. You know. It's hard to beat. It's an ancient... It's an ancient, it's an ancient contract. Yeah. yeah. So from 720 BC to 1948 AD, most of the world just ran train on Palestine. Yeah. I mean, it was just one after the fucking other. Every fucking empire you've ever heard of. But why? Dipped a toe or royally fucked this piece of they land. They have some good views or? It's just in the middle of everything. It's probably... Yeah, it's it's really again the intersection of all those continents and all those different cultures start it's kind of like you know I think another example is the Balkans, right? Where it's yeah. like you you have the transition from Europe into Asia and Well, really that's too far up. That shouldn't be the transition from Europe into Asia. It's just how far the Turks got when they fucking colonized I Half mean, of Eastern Europe. Yeah, no, I mean, but then, like, that's it's a cultural intersection, the Balkans. Yeah, right? it, yeah like, it is. Yeah, and so as... Sort of more, arbitrarily so. That's just where they were stopped. Yeah, but, like, that's, like, from conquest and, like, due to situation and context historically of, like, people moving. This one is actually a landmass intersection, which, by default, will make other cultures that are different from each other intersect. With oh, yeah. Them. Yeah. It's, it's bound to be bad. It's bad real estate. Yeah. <laughs> or really good. Or I mean, really good. If there's like world it, peace, it's if fantastic. you can, yeah, if you can like defend it and it's peaceful, then you're just like making money on trade. Everybody's got to yeah. come through you. It's fucking great. Yeah. What if it's a glorified prison? Uh, it kind of was again for the next thou two thousand years. Yeah, something like that. Um, so in 720 BC, Sargon the second and the Assyrians they conquered the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom. Okay. This is where the story, actually, of the ten lost tribes of Israel comes from. Hmm. Because the Assyrians... Is that a book that Kyrie Irving always pimps out? Or? Uh, it's definitely related to what Kyrie Irving believes. Oh, the... What is that? Black Israelites? Yes. Yeah. I think this is where they kind of steal valor from that. This is also, where I think, where the Mormons get their shit from. Oh. They're one of the lost tribes. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, right? Well, they somehow made it to America. It's an easy thing to retcon. Although yeah. I will say, as far as the ten lost tribes go... Uh, there is the one ancient culture that I believe could have gotten to America is the uh, Phoenicians. Yeah. And they were around at the same, the same time that the Ten Tribes were dispersed. If there now, was, I don't believe that that happened, but if there was one... If there was one, yeah, especially with their ability to seafare. Like, they were fantastic sailors. They were incredible. Yeah. yeah. They colonized the entire Mediterranean. They founded Carthage, all that shit, which, which Carthage might, have been the fu- might as well have been the fucking moon back then. Yeah, and they fucking make us read. They what about the 11th um, tribe? We don't, talk, we don't talk about the 11th. Yeah. That's actually Ocean's 11. That's what. Oh, the, Danny Ocean's tribe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He navigates the sea. Yeah, the Bellagio. He comes. <laughs> the Bellagio is kind of like an effigy for Rome. He's taking it all back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Makes he was sense. the first one to Did make they hit it to Caesars? America. I don't know if they hit Caesars. They just hit the Bellagio okay. in the first one. Um. So, yeah, that's where the lost tribes come from. The, and what happened, the reason it comes from that is the Assyrians, when they conquered something, would forcibly resettle the conquered land. They'd kick the, a lot of the old fuckers out, put in their own people, or just different people, just people not used to that land who were already sort of under their thumb. Israel's Dune. What? Israel is Dune. <laughs> Israel is Dune. Like, it's just in Dune, they're just constantly, like, rechanging who rules this desert planet. Yeah. Do they have is- a giant worm? There is one I've heard. I'm sure there's an anti-Semitic trope about that somewhere. Yeah, probably. This is a fucking the most rabbinic rabbi you've ever seen. Fucking, uh, fucking what? <laughs> Riding a worm. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? Just real big honker. <laughs> you know, just like. Pointy teeth. The worm is actually like a curly sideburn. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, he's riding his own burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burn is the worm. I mean, I'm sure. Himmler, Goebbels thought of that at some point, right? You know, of all the jobs in history that you could probably get that wouldn't that are awful and like hateful, but still fun, would be like awful political cartoons. Racist propaganda. propaganda. Yeah, Do- just like Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. What? 
Yeah, I guess. I just agreed to that. Have you I never? I've seen the other books. No, not the other books. Or it's the Japanese propaganda. Okay. Listen. It was a time. <laughs> I don't even care. Like, that it, yeah, we it was to a rile time. up the boys. But to it's, fight it's, the Japanese I'm just saying, the Pacific. It's, it's not a great look. I don't care about his characters in his books, but like the actual like stuff that had a purpose. It was a little, probably a little more. Every cartoon before the 90s, I feel like, is probably oh, yeah. a problem. I, to be fair, I don't even, under, like, every political cartoon I've ever seen, it's like, oh, it's like a fat cat. And on his shirt, it says, like, fat cat. And he's yeah, wearing yeah. a monocle. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very like, on the nose. Yeah, yeah I would always. Like, let's label the joke now. I, I would always yeah. find it weird when people would find, like, or say like a political cartoon about like Obama was like racist and he had like big ears in it. And I'm like, dude, this is what every politician looks like in a political cartoon. Yeah, they're caricatures. Ca- like massively caricatured. Yeah. George W. Bush, weirdly, would always get a hook nose because yeah, he just kind of had like a little bit of a bump in his nose. They would give him really slanty eyes. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he, he has smaller eyes. So, you know? Just a fucking droopy, dumb face. Yeah. But yeah, no, political cartoons are dumb. No one should make them ever. Uh, yeah, they're pretty dumb at this point. At this point, yes. Uh, so anyway, the kingdom of Judah resisted Assyrian invasion impressively because the Assyrians were badass motherfuckers. These guys didn't fuck around. They were, if I had to pick one of the most, I don't know if they were just like evil would be the right way to put it, but like, man, they ruthless, ruthless, yeah. fucking ruthless empires of all time. Um, so Judah actually took a lot of refugees from Israel, um, and this massively expanded Jerusalem. Uh, and they actually prepared Jerusalem for siege against the Assyrians, which is, uh, there's this thing, um, a plaque written in Hebrew that was left by the construction team that made all the siege arrangements called the Sil- Siloam inscription. Um, it was discovered in a tunnel in Jerusalem in the 1880s uh, and is today held by the Istanbul uh, Archaeology Museum. Give it back. Yeah, it turns out whites aren't the only people who steal artifacts they discover on land they conquered. So they're souvenirs. That's <laughs> kind of like under Hidu Turkulus. Yeah, yeah. Government. He, Hidu's got that. Okay. Give it back, Hidu. I wonder what the last name Turkulu means. Oh, it's gotta be like something of the Turks or something. You know what I mean? Big Turk. No, it just yeah, it just means uh wet Turk. <laughs> wet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing but threes. Nothing but threes, dude. Net. Net Turk. <laughs> um, Judah, however, did become a client state of Assyria. So eventually, so they weren't super duper free necessarily either. They yeah. were a hostage. You're a bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're a bank account in that situation. Um, Judah, however, was still nestled right in the middle of basically every, all of ancient history's most powerful empires. And eventually one came a calling. So I kind of feel like Israel, to use a, a bit we always use, Israel, Palestine, that area. They're like Vanderbilt. It's Cornelius li- or the school? The, the football team, the school. It's literally just like one brutal SEC team after another coming up. Yeah. So it's like, hey, we survived Kentucky. And then it's like, well, here's Georgia. Yep. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and Bama's in two weeks. Yeah. But ain't hey, playing nobody, pal. <laughs> we love you guys. Because you're a win on our schedule. Sometimes. Listen, Most a, of the time. But everyone's a ton while. of quality yeah. losses. All right. <laughs> They're the best two in whatever team in the country. <laughs> Pretty much. So the Babylonians, they didn't stop it at Israel. They got into Judah, conquered Jerusalem in 587 or 586 BC, and the kingdom of Judah was no more forever. Judah never existed again. The Temple of Solomon was destroyed when the Babylonians conquered it. And that led to, of course, one of the most talked about traumatic events in Jewish history in particular, uh, the Babylonian captivity. Yeah, not a fun time. Not as long as I thought, though. How long? It was only 50 years. It's a long time. I feel like I re- just remember it being like 200 years. Yeah, it, they, they play it up, but <laughs> it's it's two generations. I mean, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the uh, Babylon... Like Assyria was like, hey, fuck you. We're kicking you out of your own land. Not all of you, but a ton of you. Yeah. And uh, including the royal court, stuff like that, took any ruling class away, took any um, anyone useful, anyone who could resist 
exiled to Babylon. Evicted. You're out. Yeah, you're done. I mean, they left, like, the poor farmers and stuff like that who weren't going to do anything anyway. I wonder if anyone, like, reached out to their Jewish friends at this time. Check on your Jewish friends. Yeah. Okay. The Babylonians. Everyone knows someone that was sent to Babylon. I know you're going to wander the desert. At this point, we're good at it. You've already done that. Yeah, yeah, you'll navigate it. You'll be fine. It's long after that. Yeah. No, but if you're getting kicked out, you're going to have to go. In fact, all of this is after David, by the go way. Go to some desert terrain. David predates this timeline. Okay. David's like 1,000 BC. Yeah. Um, so. Mm. What do you mean? Mm. 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 If he mm. was real. He was real. They think between 1,000 and 800 BC. That's a big gap. Ah, you know what? I know. It's a harder target to hit. It is, I get it. The further away, you know. Uh, it was in Babylon that the Hebrew writing system actually, as we know it, came to be. And you guys basically uh, jacked the Babylonian calendar. Cool. Good. The lunar one? Whatever year it is in Hebrew, that's what year it would be in Babylonian. I mean, probably. It, that's just, uh, that's good business, right? You don't want to be <laughs> operating on a different time. Than no, the no. Class. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> You're showing up late to meetings. You're not getting loans. It's just not happening. Not happening. Yeah. Uh, Finally, though, after 50 years, the Jews, the Judeans, were freed by another conqueror, Cyrus the Great and the Persians. Come on down. Yeah, but the Persians are kind of cool. Yes, Daddy. He was our cool Persian As I've talked about on this show before, there's literally a verse in the Bible that's talking about how great Cyrus is because he's less shitty to them than the last two guys before that. He's the prison guard that lets you smoke. (laughs) Yeah. And it's hookah. It's hookah. Oh, yeah. Get a nice little buzz. Yeah. It's like, all right. All right. Get chill. Pretty cool. It's already so grim at this point. <laughs> it's like at least you get tobacco. <laughs> and I mean, think about it. They had their. They already had. You know, being captive in Egypt allegedly, uh, and then of course. But I didn't even talk about that because that is. It's not prehistory, but it's really murky. You know what I mean? There's no point in talking about the exact Moses Exodus, whatever. What you know? Um, so yeah, uh, Cyrus sends the the Judeans back to Palestine. Um, and, uh, yeah, they get to return home. And everyone and lives happily ever after? No, no, not really, oh, no. Okay. But the Persians were chill. I mean, they they ruled with a pretty soft hand. You pay them the, the taxes. You fight when they call you up. When they uh, dr- Again, the best form of being conquered is taxes. just give us money. Yeah, give us yeah. money, and we might need you for an army, for a dumbass war. Sound familiar? <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> be, am I right? It'd be funny if there was, like, a scene in 300 where they're like, send in the Judeans. And they're like... Uh, <laughs> God damn All it! Right. Yeah, it's like being it's better than Babylon. Yeah, it's it's being better. Tony Soprano's caterer. Yeah, when called upon, I need you. All right, you got to blow up Vesuvio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the Judeans returned to Jerusalem. They started rebuilding the temple, and the Persians now ruled over Israel, Palestine, and Gaza as well. Uh, they eventually took Egypt, as we talked about in uh, the episode we did. Uh, that was mine on the last Egyptian pharaoh ever. Because after that, it was Persians ruled, and then the Greeks came in, and it was never really an Egyptian pharaoh after that. Um, and they did. Uninterrupted, for 200 years, they ruled Palestine, which is basically how old the United States is. Yep. We're like to, what, 50? Yeah. We had the bicycle Oh, we're almost 250. We're almost 250. It's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. That might be fun. It might be a fun day. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's three years from now. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said... Well, if we don't fall. I think we'll be good for three more years. Like I said... Keep it together, guys. Yeah. yeah. Any Come day, on. man. This country's going down. It's going down the fuck to it. Like I said, uh, Israel's schedule in college football terms, goddamn insane. It's a tough one. Good SOS, you know? Because the Persian rule ended... When motherfucking Alexander the Great <laughs> rolled in. That's like late 2000s Nick Saban. Like, yeah. It just. An unstoppable force. He's yeah. Just, it's just can't do anything about it. doesn't end. It just gets harder. Yeah. But at this point, they're not even defending themselves. Like, they're just sitting there, like, God damn, who's like, what that? We, I mean, we couldn't beat the last guys. Now you got him? I'm not beating him. No. It's yeah. quite the hit list, though. Like, you're just. Going through it all. Everything. There are so few of us, but we still stick around. 
We don't hunker down anywhere, but we don't disappear. You survivors. Just just living, bro. That was, uh, oh, man, I think it was in Catch-22. There's, like, a scene where uh, an American's talking to an Italian guy, and he's like, Italy will uh, be long, will be around the long past America. And he's like, what are you talking about? America is the most powerful country on earth. And he's like, yes, we are very weak. You're very strong. We'll be around longer than you. And he's like, well, what are you talking about? We're strong. And he's like, yes, but we, people will come in, they'll rule us, but we'll always be here. Well, then it's not the same thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But he was just like, that was the drunk Italian guy's logic. Well, yeah, every yeah. great empire at this point is just kind of coasting. They're retired. The Greeks, the Italians. Yeah, they did it. They did it. They did like, the damn thing. We don't really need to try anymore. We're it now. Even the British are like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, British still holding strong. But They're yeah. fine. I mean, comparatively, they are nothing yes. to what they were. <laughs> well, the sun never sets. It does set it now. It does now. Yeah, quite a bit. Very much does. Yeah. They're getting that sundowners, you know. <laughs> uh, so Alexander the Great rolls up. Alexander the Great, by the way, I forget which book, but also mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. In the Old Testament. Uh, you can tell me that. I'll believe you. No, it's true. I don't, I don't do a lot of scholarly research in that department. I just remember reading it in like. You don't grade keep school. it by your bed. The Bible. It's not a twenty-minute read before you go uh, to sleep. The last time I read through the Bible, it was the Brick Testament, which is the Lego transcription of the Bible. It was actually awesome. They make all the Bible scenes in Lego, and the is Revelations it, one is to die. Is it for. like that White Stripes music video? Uh, no, it's like little uh, minifigs and stuff. They're making the scenes with like little Lego oh. people. So it's like Lego Batman. Yeah, it's like Lego okay. Batman, but Brick Testament and like Revelations, they make the eyeball angels that's dope. out of Lego. It's pretty God, sweet. That's dope. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the Greeks took over Palestine slash Israel and ruled under both Alexander, who didn't live very long, and after his death, the region uh, was controlled by both the Ptolemaic dynasty in uh, Egypt and the Seleucid Empire, which was kind of just like the Middle East, um, because Alexander's generals split up all the Insane. How many years after did Alexander die? After what? He conquered? Them? Yeah. Uh, let me see. It's not important. Just give us like a brief not estimate. Uh, like 10 years? Yeah, it wasn't that long. He uh, had nowhere left to conquer. Less than a decade? You know he would have the They just give up on the area once he dies? So 331 BC is when he conquered there, and he died in 323 BC. So nine years. Okay. Mm. And they're like, no, hey, we're out. So, like, nine, to eight, something, seven, eight, nine years. Eight years. Matter. Yeah, it's eight. Whatever. Um, I hate that BC math. Uh, so the Seleucid Empire actually took. A, it started under Ptolemaic Egyptian rule, uh, but then the Seleucid Empire conquered it. These Greek states all all uh, fought each other. Um, but interestingly enough, this is when we have a little blip. Of independence. For whom? For Israel, Palestine, whatever. Okay. This is when the kingdom of Judea is born. This is the Hanukkah story, kind of. The Maccabeans, uh, yes. all that stuff. So the Maccabeans was a revolt. However, they weren't the ones that gained independence. First, they gained sem semi-autonomy. So the Seleucid Empire was rotting. They were, uh, they were in wars on every front. It was a fucking nightmare. They were fighting the Parthians, they were fighting the Ptol Ptolemy, um, yeah, probably, uh, I can't remember the other. Just getting it from every angle. Uh, getting it from yeah. every fucking side. Resources um, draining. I have played as the Seleucid Empire in Rome Total War, and it's very difficult. Uh, Weird, I thought war is supposed to stimulate the economy. Is that new? Uh, not when it happens in your backyard. Yeah, not when it's near you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's better when it's on the other side of the ocean and all their factories are destroyed. And then they rely on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then weapons. it's fucking oh. dope oh, for your okay. economy. Yeah. Got it. Um, so first they gained semi-autonomy as a vassal state because they couldn't really be, like, directly controlled. Uh, and eventually they just went full independent because the Seleucids couldn't hold it. Uh, under the Hasmonean dynasty, the kingdom of Judea expanded, in fact, uh, and started making ties with some republic in Italy. Uh, it was during this time that they also f apparently finalized Old Testament canon. Oh, okay. So this is uh, the Maccabeans. Fuck, when is this? I'm sorry. This is like three. This is like the 300s. Okay. Okay. And oh, I'm sorry. No, this is the 100s. 
This is the 100s. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought the Romans kind of took yeah, yeah. their tail. This is the 100s BC, okay, um, when this is going on. Now, they actually expanded a little bit. They did now bring what is the Gaza Strip and other stuff around there under their control. So this is so when you talk about the borders of whatever Jewish Israel, um, you know, being po- Gaza, they're talking about the kingdom of Judea. They're not okay. talking about ancient Israel or ancient Judah. The kingdom of Judea in still ancient times, but more around like 100 BC-ish, that would be not even the original kingdom of Judea. They eventually just conquered that part of it. So, But at their height, that was under their control. Okay, so one, confused. That's a lot to track on who gets what and who's supposed to be where. Right. When Already. was Israel? What? You're saying Judea was Israel? I thought Israel was Israel. Yeah, no. But Judah also because they had Jerusalem? It's a fucking mess. And then it's a fucking mess. And by the way, I'm talking about Jews a lot right now because that's where most of the history is written down. But there, it's not just Jewish people living in this area. There's plenty of pagans. Christians aren't around yet, but there's plenty of uh, pagan uh, uh, people as well. Um, you know, Babylonian. Always has been. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I think a lot of the Palestinians are probably descended from those people. Yeah, it gets a little wishy-washy, too, when you start comparing, like, all right, ethnicities versus religions. And right, stuff it's like a mess. That. It's, but just, ta- just know that when I'm talking about this region, I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter if you were Jewish or not, you weren't in charge. No, no one was in charge. You weren't fucking in charge. Yeah. Except for this one little period. Uh, (laughs) However. You didn't build that. You didn't build that. You certainly didn't build that. (laughs) In 67 BC, there was a civil war in Judea, and both sides fighting for the crown requested the help of Rome and the great Pompey Magnus, Mm. who you may know as part of the triumvirate that Julius Caesar was in. Oh. I may know that. So enter Rome. <laughs> I feel like that's the wrong place to call. What Pompey did was conquer Syria and immediately make Judea a vassal state to the Roman Republic. As they are one to do. Yeah. yeah. Pretty standard. Pretty standard mm-hmm. move. And then I don't even need to talk much more about it because after taking control and making the Republic into an empire, Augustus just made Judea a Roman province in 6 AD. You're not even a vassal kingdom anymore. Get the fuck out of here, Herod, or whoever your dynasty is now. You're just a, you're just a Roman province. We full-on fucking own you. Yeah. Now, believe it or not, Jews and Christians, there are Christians at this point, not huge fans of Romans. Oh, really? No. Didn't like the Roman rule. Uh, there were a couple of massive Jewish revolts against Rome, and the last one, so the one in 70 AD was the one where the temple was destroyed, but that, from what I've read, is not the worst one. I didn't realize this until I did this episode. Not the worst revolt in terms of how it ended for the Jews. And this is where you start getting to the point where there, where Jews get sent all over Europe. The diaspora. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, diaspora. Yeah. diaspora. 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 The last revolt was the Bar Kokhba revolt. Thank you. Basically ended, it ended in just brutal, brutal massacre of Jews and depopulation. If they weren't slaughtered, they were sent the fuck out of there. Uh, this was all done under the direct command, I'm pretty sure he showed up to do it, of a guy you probably heard of, Emperor Hadrian. Right. Back to the diaspora, though, it just sounds like a medication that has all the wrong side effects. Yeah. <laughs> Anal bleeding. Yeah. Eyeball swelling. Heart palpitations. <laughs> it's for, like, high cholesterol. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's anxiety, And it's just, actually, like, yeah. a long list. It's like, oh, actually, cancer. Suicidal thoughts. Homicidal thoughts. Depression. Murder, everything, suicidal thoughts. Yes. <laughs> just everything bad possible. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't think I need this medication. There's, like, Ozempic may cause infanticidal thoughts. Oh my Don't God. take it if you have babies. Or a brain. <laughs> <laughs> if you're around children more than 30 seconds a day, do not take Ozempic. Yeah. You will want to murder them. It's like Chantix, but while awake. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just gave everybody in the Middle East Ozempic? Maybe they'll stop having a blood... I don't think they're having a like like obesity a problem <laughs> over there. There's not an obesity problem. No, but it, it prevents... Anywhere like, but here. If you take Ozempic, it apparently stops like your urge to smoke... Oh, yeah, drink. Apparently, it stops you from Gamble. like biting your fingernail. It's, it's like stops like all urges. Yeah, you're just like 
I don't need any. So if we just give Hamas a bunch of Ozempic, maybe they'll stop trying to kill Jews. It'd be really funny if like one of us got on Ozempic and well, okay, one of the two of us got on because the joke won't work for you. One of the two of us got on Ozempic and our wives came in and were just like, God, I'm so horny, I need to fuck the shit out of you, and we're just like, I'm okay, I'm good, <laughs> I'm fine. No, thank you. No, it's or I guess you are on Ozempic out at the bar. You're not drinking. Some chicks just like, oh, daddy. I'm asexual now. You basically are, yeah. I'm all about is that a happier life? It's more profitable and <laughs> prog- like progressive life, I think. Probably. I just like work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just focused to the grind, baby. I'm yeah. on. But you're like a robot, though. You're like, I'm on my grind. Yeah. My oh. happy little grind. KPIs met. It also sounds awful because food's awesome. Food's great. I would not want to give up on like a good meal. I will say this. like I love food, but I hate. Like oh, there's nothing I hate more than overeating. It's the worst. Oh no, I I eat till I overeat, especially right. if I'm treating myself. Oof. I, I think there's. I a did time cook myself this. a giant steak the other day, and I, that was dope. I had a bunch of lamb actually before I came here. <laughs> lamb tacos. <sighs> it's just so many jokes for this episode. Lamb and you eating lamb. Lamb because it's our people's animal. Yeah, yeah, we're the shepherds. All that stuff. Yeah, but that's a la- that's actually a cop out because I'm like, oh man, there's so many jokes I could say, but I don't have any. I don't have any. Yeah, do one. The joke. T- <laughs> tell a joke, funny guy. Tell me a joke. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Uh, I will say. Moving <laughs> on. No, no, no. One last thing on Ozempic. It's the perfect drug for a new world order. <laughs> really? It's, it's like, like that Christian. Fu- it's the Christian Bale movie. Yeah. Oh, what is uh, that? It's aw- equilibrium. It's a, yeah, it's awful movie. <laughs> yeah, it's awful so fucking movie. Unless you're really into watching people's heads get like cut in half. It. I remember I watched it high one time in college. So we like, this movie's so dope, dude. If you like to make sure you love this. And I watched it and was like, I didn't smoke enough weed. Because this is fucking terrible. No, the thing is, um, it makes you bored while still on weed. Because there's like no color in it or anything. It's like, none of us have emotions. Great character writing, y'all. Yeah. So only like one or two people in the entire movie have feelings. Like sick. Cool. Cool arcs. Sick, bro. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, like, Tay Diggs in that shit? Uh, yes, Tay Diggs is in that. Yeah. He's also terrible. <laughs> Everyone's bad. Every The whole movie's bad. Yeah. So, this revolt, the Romans were just like, I have had fucking enough of these people. And by the way, again, in Rome Total War, that area, not easy to control. I mean, you pretty much have to do what the Romans did. Um... It's honestly, I, like, I, reading about this revolt, I was like, it's a miracle that anyone is still alive in that region. Yeah. A thousand years after this revolt, Jerusalem's population was still 50% of what it was in 60 AD. That's insane. By some calculations, Palestine's population in the 7th century AD was still just 20% of its first century peak. The Romans went... Full fucking scorched earth. They're just like, you know, nah. Nah. We're tired of it. We, yeah. Well, Rob, it's called Rome Total War. Total. Total War. Not half-assed war. No. Not Rome. Peak and sea. Rome. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly, like I said, a miracle that they were there. Uh, they were pretty much all murdered, uh, displaced, or enslaved. All. Fucking all of them. Uh, Hadrian also basically outlawed Judaism and executed Jewish scholars to make sure that people didn't know. Can't it. learn it. Yeah. Um, when, what time period is this? This is uh, like the 140s, one thir- something in the mid one mid first century. I imagine this is about when or mid second century, mid second century. Yeah, because second century would be the one hundreds, right? First I, century would be zero to one hundred. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta imagine this is where the oral. Um, what do you call it? Like the oral education, like when you pass down traditions and things like that through an oral trans commu- like transmission. Yeah. Versus like just having it written down. Like, for instance, like I I'm gonna speak out of my ass here for a minute, but like a thing steeped in Jewish tradition is Kabbalah. That is not like you can't just go. I guess you can now, but like for the longest time, you can just like go buy a book, the Kabbalah book. Right here it is. Like it's no, it's like you have to be you have to read something. And then reread it, right? And then be taught what the words mean. So they really want to—they really want to drill it into you, so that you don't—it's not forgotten. No, yeah, like the entire thing, like the Talmud and shit. Like it's yeah, there's parables and stuff in that, but 
there's things that you have to know the double meaning of. Right. Like, and that's not written anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, the, a lot of, like, our historical transmission of information is actually coded. And you have Intr- to, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, so, like, um, the cabal is, like, the secret meaning of everything. Okay. So you guys have your own unwritten rules of baseball? Yeah. Um, you know, if you uh, knock a guy's yarmulke off his head, you get to beat him up. You get to put one in the ribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got to th- you got to throw a heater at 95 mm-hmm. just right into the dome, you know. Into the dome. Send God a message, damn. you know. Hey man, it's the Middle East. It's This, this was old school. This was before we got soft in the early 2000s. This ain't the field of dreams, man. No. <laughs> yeah. Before CTE. So, in a further attempt to erase Judaism from earth, I guess, Hadrian also. This is uh alleged. Uh, they, uh, this is debated about. It's not sure. This definitely happened, but they're not sure about the reasoning behind why it happened. The uh, uh, province was renamed from Judea to Syria, Palestina. And that's where we get the term Palestine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Palestine's not even mentioned until this. Uh, yeah. Now, they think it's like maybe from maybe uh, from Philistines. Yeah. It could be. You know what I mean? Like the etymology of it. But Philistines, by the way, like I said, nothing to do with Palestinians. They, I mean, they, they're, you're still, there's still Philistine blood, I guess, and basically everyone in the region because they well, kind of – bred into it I, I i think it's fascinating that oh wait people have been renaming this shit to erase history of other people there <laughs> i know right forever forever for the whole fucking time yeah yeah classic yeah so in 390 ad the romans are still running shit in syria palestine still fucking Still doing it. Uh, however, the Roman Empire splits in two to East and West Israel. Uh, or, I'm sorry, East and West uh, Roman Empire. The mm-hmm. Eastern Roman Empire, now out of Constantinople, Constantine, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. They still rule Israel, Palestine, and uh, it remained under Roman control now, the Eastern Roman Empire. Uh, it's believed during this time the Jews lost their minor- uh, majority status in Palestine. <laughs> they lost their menorah. Yeah. We lost their menorah, huh? <laughs> yeah. Damn it's it. gone. Uh, Where is it? So Christians became the dominant. Uh, religious group in the region at this time. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, also, Byzantines were kind of dickholes to Jews. Um, well, they, join the club. Yeah, right. Their restrictions gradually increased on Judaism. It was actually okay at first, but they eventually Jews were not allowed to uh, uh, build new places of worship, hold public office, or own Christian slaves. That's not fair. Yeah, That's pretty, not mean. Fair. pretty mean. Pretty uh, mean. In 611 AD, the Persians invaded and the Jews supported them. I mean, go back to daddy. Yeah, they go were like, back to daddy. fuck the Romans. We've had enough of this shit. Uh, the Persians were able to take the area for a while and even, allegedly, stole the true cross. Oh, man. You know what? This is kind of like a retread, right, for us? It's like, why don't we bring Mac Brown back? Why don't we bring him back? Bring back what? Mac Brown. Yeah. We're like UNC. It's like, <laughs> it's working. Had, had a terrible run, like Larry Fedoras and shit. Now it's like, you know what? Bring back back. Bring yeah, back we're back. Good. Yeah. So eventually, however, the Eastern Roman Empire got the area back under control, and the Persians gave them the true cross back. And uh, once they moseyed back into there, they slaughtered a ton of Jews. Sounds about right. Yeah. Hmm. I'm about to get tired of this story. Yeah, I mean, you just keep repeating the same thing over and over. I know. It's, and it's the Jews reboot got fucked. after reboot. Then yeah. came the rise of Islam. In 635, Muslim armies conquered the region. Actually, a lot more peacefully than people think. They just kind of moved in. There wasn't a lot of resistance. Byzant- the Byzantines had b- bankrupted themselves in uh, war after war with the Persians. Um, the Romans, Byzantines, the same thing. Uh, during the 8th century, uh, there were new laws that required Jews and Christians to wear identifying clothing. Jews were required to wear yellow stars around their neck. Classic. Yeah. Christians were, uh, and on their hats, and Christians were had to wear blue stars. Uh, eventually, a poll tax was Put on all non-Muslims. This is pretty classic. Uh, I feel like everybody knows about this. Who knows anything about history? So if you you had to pay extra taxes if you weren't Muslim, basically. Um, yeah. In 1099, the Crusaders moved in, took Jerusalem. Damn right. Boom. The kingdom of Jerusalem was set up. This was not a Jewish kingdom. No. Um, this was <laughs> certainly not. No. Uh, however, a hundred years later, Saladin and the Muslims took it back. Uh, the, and then the third crusade, Richard the Lionheart kicked off. Uh, Crusader colony, though, that's all mercenaries. Basically, yeah. It's just a, a pirate island, really. It's just a place. It's like a bar you walk into, and everyone turns their head, and they're all like six five jacked farm dudes. And you're like, oh no, I've got to leave. <laughs> I'm not. No, there's n- there's nothing here for me. Yeah. Christ. It, co- cool. 
out. See, <laughs> enjoy the bar. Yeah, yeah. It, it's walking into like a rough. Yeah, it's boom. dive. It's boomers without the pe- the nice people in it. Yeah, yeah. Looks like boomers clientele completely different. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the clientele is. There's a bar I just don't want to go into, but it's a biker bar. Yeah, you feel a towny bar too far away from campus. It's honestly a bar in my hometown that I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's just the Waco Twin Peaks. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yep. That's that's, that's the one. Good, yeah. Yep. Uh, in 1229, actually, Jerusalem was again under Christian, Christian control after a treaty between the Holy Roman Empire or Emperor Frederick II and Sultan al Kamil. Uh, that ended the Sixth Crusade. However, there's so many crusades. It's insane, yeah. And <laughs> we, we don't talk about it. That enough. didn't last long because in 1244, Jerusalem was sacked by the Tartars uh, who decimated the city's Christian popula- population, drove out the Jew. I don't know how they went left, but drove out the Jews. Raise the city again. It's There's just, just getting, one left. It's just like, getting gotta sacked go. again and again. Yeah, it's Alright, Ishmael, get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, alright. All right, go God right. God damn it. Uh, just really holding on. Yeah. Between 1258 and 1291. Um, yeah. There was another person who showed up. Again, like I said, their schedule just doesn't fucking stop. The Mongols. Oh, my God. The Mongols showed up? <laughs> I just want you to know what this area has taken. <laughs> These Syrians who are, like, at this point under the radar. Yeah. The Babylonians and the Persians, and that's just, like, their non-con at this point. How like far a, west did the Mongols make it? This very far. far. <laughs> very far west. The landmass of their empire, when you see it on a map, it's you're insane. Like, How? How'd they do that with horses? Low man wins. They're very small people. It's true. It's it's a giant... Low pad level. I mean, I, I think Rob just pulled it up. It's <laughs> Holy shit. fucking insane. <laughs> this is really good at war. Yeah. Yeah. They were just like, India, nah, we're good. So, essentially... I want no part of India. The <laughs> Mongols never fully controlled it, but it was like <laughs> the buffer zone between the Mongols and uh, the Mamluks of Egypt. I bet there's a ton of land that the Mongols t- took that they just kind of went through, killed a bunch, raped a bunch, and then just like moved on. We're like, meh. Yeah, pretty They're much. Like, mm. There's nothing here. Yeah, yep. we're not going to. I don't think they governed these lands. No. And that's probably what happened here. Um, so it was essentially like a buffer zone between the two. The Mongols were there, the Mamluks were there, whatever. Uh, and the Mamluks are interesting. Now, this is an underrated one. This is, you know, this is. If you want to know what the Unsullied are based on, the Mamluks. The Mamluks. Uh, it was in Egypt. There was a caste of warrior slaves known as the Mamluks. They gradually took control of the kingdom. Uh, they were of Turkish origin mostly. They were bought as children and trained in warfare. They were highly prized warrior people. Everybody wanted these guys. And they had their balls. I don't remember that part. If they were or not. I. You know. I would have liked to know. Seems like a soldier. It'd be better if he had his nut sack. I agree. You want you want high testosterone. High test, yeah. Yeah, high T. There's only so many like horse testicles you can make him eat. Right. You know, or goat testicles or whatever the fuck. Um Bull. The Mamluks rolled in and they took it over. They beat they beat back the Crusaders. I think and then there was a failed seventh crusade that tried to tried to beat them back. And they ruled until fifteen sixteen. So they had another like two hundred years. Yeah. When the Ottoman Turks rolled it. Oh, those guys. Yeah. Finally getting to some people I know. Yeah. The Ottoman Turks, who were so powerful, they were essentially like one or two lost battles away from colonizing half of Europe. Yeah. At the same time that Europe, not that Europe's a mono, uh, ethno continent, but yeah. at the same time that Europe was colonizing the Americas. Yeah. Because the, the Turks, like I said, they came in in 1516 and conquered Palestine. Can you imagine if, like, the, the Ottoman Turks did conquer Europe and because of that like there is more of an exodus from Europe to the Americas oh man be a completely different country it might be even more powerful somehow I mean theoretically like so I'm a little country. ashamed to admit this but uh, the Ottomans were kind of going until about World War One, right they and did go to World War they I. did but yeah. like well, how did they disperse like how did that kind of get broken up what do you mean they, they lost in World War I. I know they lost but it was kind of like heavy sanctions uh, they basically were confined to Turkey at that point, and then all their what was left of their empire um, 
it just got broken up by the the British took it over and broke it up in the Sykes Picot. Okay. That's where you get into Palestine, modern Palestine, Israel stuff, Iraq, all gotcha. that, all that shit. That's that was really my only yeah. question or so, like thought was like I know that they had a pretty large landmass. Like how did they? It was a huge, huge empire that was extremely powerful for about call it 150, 200 years, and then still something to be reckoned with for a while after that. So for 400 years, the Turks owned it. Then World War One happened. And, uh, yeah, that is the ending point. Then we get into all the shit we have now. Which we're not talking about. Which we're not talking about. That's a whole, that's a whole episode on its own. It really like, is. You, get, you really need to get into minutia at that point. You have to. But it's worth noting that... Well, at the end of the day, let's just blame the British. You know, I don't agree with that, but <laughs> because that sort of takes, sort Pretty of erases down. like 4,000 years of history. Yeah, yeah. I and know it also, everything we just talked about, sure, but let's just blame the British. It, it's funny, too, because it's like blaming the British is just like the only people who should have known better or done better are the white people who took it over. Yeah. They're the ones who did, who should have gotten it right. Because <laughs> you're approaching the... Because that's what you're saying. Yes. You don't expect the Muslims to get it right. Or anything like that, you oh you but the the white people should have gotten it right. The, the Romans, saviors. the Muslims, well Persians, Assyrians, Byzantine Empire, Babylonians, um, the Turks, the Philistines. Yeah. Now it's worth pass, maybe. Yeah, there. Yeah, nothing for them. Here's so, the thing, though: you only get it if you still exist. Yeah, I mean, as an empire. True. Yeah. Nobody's yelling at the tur- nobody's yelling at Turkey. Yell nope. at Greece. Or Greece. Yeah. No. God damn it, Macedon. Go to Rome right now. So what's interesting, though, Start to pick it. I, I found a chart that showed the primary religious main population. For Well, I guess we kind of are blaming Iran right now. So we are blaming the Persians a little bit. I mean, Iran, I will say this. There are a lot of Iranians who are like Persian supremacists. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like the thing. It's like actually it's not Rome or the Greeks. All modern society is based off of Persia. Like they're really into that. I could buy Vegas's. By what? All Vegas, is, yeah, Vegas. All is the fair. nightclubs. Yeah, it's a really funny like subset of like Twitter and the if internet. If there is so. one thing done right, those nightclubs are fire. Oh yeah, yeah. It's luxury. Also, if I could go back in time, I ran in like the fifties. Ooh, sounds okay. Kind of sounds fun. That sounds fun. I mean, Tehran looks beautiful in oh, pictures. Yeah. Still fucking hundred and ten degrees. We might have we might have fucked that up. Fuck the last That yeah. might have been us. <sighs> oh, that was definitely us. That was definitely us. Yeah. <laughs> so, interesting, I, and I say all of this because I want to get to this point. Interesting stat about the population that I found. This is just on the um, Jewish population, but I think it. I think you can uh, it, probably put it on pa- the Palestinian population in general, right? Yeah. A third of Israel's population today, Israel's population, and there are a lot of Arabs that live in Israel too. Mm-hmm. People at, like forget that it's well, they call it an ethno state, but it's not. An what percentage state. are Christian uh, in Israel? Yeah, today not a ton. Wow, you guys are really holding out on us. I know there's a lot of Muslims Boo. in Israel. In Israel, uh, but it's our what, holy city too. God damn it! Right? Oh yeah. Later, it was ours before it was yours. Whatever, man. Yeah. We took it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's how it works. I know. Like, like, I don't understand. It's what yeah. happens. Yeah. So, one third of Israel's population today um, is either A, a descendant of pre 1880 Jewish population, which means just they've lived there forever. Mm-hmm. Like, they're from time immemorial. Uh, or B, a descendant of non European Jewish immigrants. So, Jews who lived in the Middle East. Probably got kicked out there, and, but not necessarily in what you would call Israel Palestine today. Yeah, yeah, no, but like they were probably so, part of the diaspora. Yeah, which was that's one third of Israel's population today. I think you could probably say safely say another third of it are other Palestinians who have also just been there forever. Yeah. So this is the history of these uh, most of the people who live there. Just. Empire after empire after empire after fucking empire. Yeah. They never ruled it. Not once have they owned their own land. I mean, the Old Testament was being fucking written the last time they owned it. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, 
I'm it's looking fucking at fucking renters, baby. I'm looking at the chart you have up, and it's like you will own nothing, Rob. Of just it's like a it's like a loop de loop of just different people. Yeah, just rising and falling constantly. So just landlord after landlord. It really is. My thing, though, I guess to when we get into like the who owns whose does it belong to, you can expand that argument outwardly forever, because no one actually owns anything. Right. It's who's holding it at that moment? Yeah. And that's how it always has been in history. Who has the strength to to hunker it. down? Right. And I mean, which we're not trying to sound like fucking Sigma males here. No, we're like, you gotta feel it. Just no, no, it. no, it's, we're just being realistic. It's it's not even. Yeah, it's it's just fact. Like it's a fact that's life, how right? it happens. Like it's if you wanna if you wanna take like hyper liberalist like I guess conjecture to its nth degree, the world has no borders. Right. They're all constructs and but like, even to go back to like the natives right natives in america all right give back the land then where are you going to go back to you as a, an american where are you where are you going to go I, yeah, that is the i hate anyone that says that shit like this is it's their land then go leave leave then go back and like see literally if you're that's welcomed the only in ireland or the, italy or give or, them party let them live on your property if you own a house that's the only actionable shit you can do yeah, I mean, because you can sit there and be like, give them some other stuff and just like wave a sign. And maybe in 20, 30 years, you might get something done. Right. Like, it's just exhausting. It's so hollow. Uh, I would be so pissed if I was a Native American. The inability to listen to that shit. The inability to claim anything is kind of a hilarious thing about our culture, too. Like, it's not ours. It's not really ours. Nothing's ours. You know, but like the whites have no culture. That's right. 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 Only but, colonization. That's it. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But it's like at the same time, we we didn't even do it the best. No. Somehow Mongolia. Oh, Mongolia. Mon- Mongols did a hell of a job. Mongolia is like I'm trying to think of like a random co- school that won just like the most dominant national championship ever and then disappeared into the ether. Mm. Uh. <laughs> oh. Minnesota. Like yeah. 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 I was about to say yeah. Like Minnesota Army? in the 30s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yale? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like, it's just, we're talking about constructs. We're talking about ideas that are made by men. You want to find some sort of inherent truth in them? What the fuck do you think you're doing? Like, we're all, it's the premise of this show. We are all winging it constantly throughout history. It's not about, like, there is no universal truth of ownership with land. It, it's it, fucking land. Who's on it? It is also funny to me, too, because, like, the people who, like, whine about this the most are definitely the ones who also love to say things like generational trauma. And what I just laid out here is literally, like, they didn't have a happy time. No, there wasn't one. Here's the thing. History if you want to talk about generational trauma, it started from the moment we became self-aware. <laughs> like, that's the, the first one that was like, oh, wait, There's me? just one monkey that's like, oh, my God! Yeah, no, it, it started like that. <laughs> like, I don't know if it, it ate a what mushroom. What done? <laughs> yeah, it ate a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the water was really glassy that day, and it yeah, saw its first reflection. Yeah, tadpole that grew legs. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, God damn it. Yeah, man, honest to God, the generational trauma might have started when we started breathing air, for all we know. Like, at a certain point... But it is just like, it's... All this to say, shut the fuck up on your story. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck up. And, you know... If you don't text Jake... If you're going to post it, at least call him. Call me. God damn it. You can call our hotline number at... uh, You don't get it because you're a Patreon... You're not a Patreon member. But if you are, you know... The whole reason we're doing this episode is call Jake. On the Patreon hotline. Make sure he's okay. We do have a Patreon, by the way. Patreon.com slash softcore history. Yeah. Uh, do you want ex- more hot content like yeah, this? Yeah, two extra episodes a month, a whole back catalog of evergreen content because it's history. We're not talking about, I mean, we we'll, might do a history topic that is relating to something in current events, but it's still history. They do our best, so we should probably do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so stupid. Annoying. So we'll have a Napoleon episode coming out. We so. are going to do a Napoleon review, talk about Oh, Napoleon. wait, when is it? That's coming out soon. Yeah. It's November. It's yeah. Oh, month. fuck. So I thought it was next be, year. That'll be a November episode. Oh, no, it's November. Although, oh, hell yeah. We're going to have to have two because Ridley Scott said he's also dropping a four and a half hour cut on Apple TV. Oh. Do you want to do a four and a half hour long watch along? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I, I want to see it in theaters, but I would prefer to see the four and a half hour version. It'll be like uh, The Hateful Eight where Tarantino dropped on Netflix. It's a four hour version, but it's an hour for each. So it's four episodes. 
Uh, the longer one's actually better. Yeah, it's good. Too. Uh, uh so I still haven't watched it, but allegedly, uh, Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut, is like fucking brilliant. Oh, I've never seen even the. the oh, I release. like regular Kingdom of Heaven, but Kingdom apparently, really good. The director's cut is apparently. Like I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Yeah. I need to yeah, dive. But what about in. the Snyder cut? <laughs> I haven't watched it. I uh, yeah, Ridley Scott's like historical stuff. I actually have never div- dove into that part of his catalog. You haven't seen Gladiator? Oh, I guess I've seen Gladiator. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That would be a, quite the omission. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's like a top three. I, I don't think it's his third best film, but it's like a th- top three most beloved Ridley Scott films. Yeah, That's, I'm like, I'm in like it's probably a top three movie of all time. That's beloved. Not even Ridley Scott. Mm. I think just like general public, if you pulled everybody, their top three movies. Somebody like yeah. the majority of the population. It's like say such Gladiator. a dude I, movie. I think, like I everybody think you're likes about to say, I think you're about to say. I think it's every dude. Every, every dude. Lo- I mean, especially because we were when it came out, we were like nine or ten. It was like the first R-rated movie you watch. Yeah, it was up there for sure. It's all Valor. Yeah, it's all Valor. Um, and Gladiator Two is coming out. Is it? Really? Have you read the Gladiator Two script from no, back in the day? No, we you can got, talk about it. You off, got to. Off yeah, air. we'll talk about it off here. Anyway, that's all I got for today. What'd you guys learn? Um, I'm retired. I've learned that most people probably don't know anything about Israel or Gaza. No, they know it from the lens of, like, 1948 on. I even learned stuff researching this because I was like, them too? Yeah. I was like, man, it never ends. I knew it was bad. I knew it was, like, every empire rolled through, but I I honestly didn't know about the Mongols. It's a real murderer's row of just... (laughs) A real murderer's row. Like, actual one. Yeah. Yeah. Quite the genocidal run. Yeah. Uh, Who's today's Hitler? Everyone. <laughs> um, technically Hitler. <laughs> I mean, no, we didn't get to him. We well, didn't get to him. He's yeah. around, but he's yeah. painting but at I the mean, very end. Modern day Israel's because of Hitler for the most part. Yeah. No. Kind they of. were trying. the The British were trying to get a, a, a Jewish state there in like thirty six or thirty seven. I know, but it was a make. The good. British didn't want to be there. It was a make good. I think that's why the Sykes Picot thing was so shitty. They were just like, get us. Out of here. We're done. Yeah, like, I don't care. <laughs> Please fire <laughs> us. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, um, all right. I guess if we had to go with, like, the worst empire that kind of rolled through and seemed to, like, just slaughter Jewish people, the Romans sounded bad. The Romans were the worst. Yeah. Romans the Romans, bad. like, salted the earth. Yeah, they were just like, they do that. They were like, we're getting us out of here. Yeah. Yeah, but in here also. Why do we think we're getting you out of here? Because, uh,. Boy, they didn't fuck around. No, <laughs> no they didn't. Buy they actually, the so Romans had a, a, a saying about themselves that everyone knows our pu- our punishments are the most just. The most just. Yeah. That's how you know uh, law and order. Yeah. That's how you know they don't they don't fuck around. No, no, <laughs> no. All right. Well, that's all I got for uh, Jake Goldman and Dan Jester. I'm Rob Fox. You just got sauce served. <laughs>